Dear Regina Sailing family and friends and all others who want to learn a little bit more about celestial navigation. We have come very, very far. We have a position. We have two position lines and where they cross, that's where we are. This is fantastic, as long as we don't move. So in this short chapter, we will just repeat what a running fix is from the Yachtmaster offshore course, which you might remember. Because the running fix we will use now to transfer the first position line so we can determine a, po a position even if we have moved in between. I hope you've had some fun doing site reductions using my templates and maybe also understanding what you're doing step by step. So these exercises which you've just done, these are the most important ones in celestial navigation. So when you're done with that, we can now continue with uh, the astro fix, meaning what happens if we are moving while doing this. So that's called the uh, running and the moving the position line. So let's go back to our basics. We are here, our sun is there, and you can remember that the zenith distance in yellow, that is the distance from the sun, and by having the direction to the sun which is called the azimut here in yellow, uh, you can reach to get a position line which is in orange, 90 degrees to the azimut. And that's the um, position line somewhere along that line, that's where you are. Okay, and then we have also looked at the uh, situation that the sun goes on into the afternoon, it moves westwards, and in the afternoon we get another position line. So where they cross, that's where we are. Now, the question is, what happens if we've moved in the meantime, when we've continued our sail while uh, the sun has done the same, meaning that we are not at the same position as we were in the morning? For this reason, let's go back to the Yachtmaster Coastal and Yachtmaster Offshore course. And let's do a little recap of running fix, because that's what it is all about. So remember in the uh, Yachtmaster Coastal course, we found our position by taking bearings, two bearings, uh, on the same lighthouse, or the same item uh, that we find ashore. So let's say we are sailing on northbound here. We take the first bearing to this lighthouse, and let's assume we have a bearing of 73 degrees true. Of course, you first have a magnetic bearing, you take the variation into account, and you draw a line on the chart 73 degrees true. So now what happens is that we continue our cruise, and a little bit later we take a second bearing. Let's assume it's 112 degrees true. So at the time of that second bearing, we know we are somewhere along that red line, but we don't know where. So all we know is first we were along that green line and a little bit later we were along that red line. How do we solve that? That we do by uh, plotting a estimated position. So remember the estimated position? What you do is to get the estimated position, you first take the uh, your course through water with one arrow and then you add the current with three arrows and you get to the estimated position EP here drawn as a triangular. So um, let's, uh, since we don't know where we started on that green line, we can place our starting point anywhere along that green line. I've just taken any one here and then I drew the water track and then the current and I got to an estimated position. Are we here? Hmm, no, not really, because we should be, after having run the, uh, to the estimated position, somewhere along the red line, as we know. Okay, so the starting point, which we didn't know, 
was incorrect. But the course through water with one arrow and the current with three arrows are presumably correct. Okay, then let's say we could have started here or there or here or there. Who knows where we started along the green line? So we get a lot of estimated positions, a lot of triangulars. And as we, we are somewhere at one of these triangles. And you can see that the third one makes the most sense because the third one is the estimated position that is on the red line, the second bearing. So the most easy thing is that you take a parallel, uh, you draw a parallel line uh, from the green line to the green dotted line. The green dotted line is now the parallel, and then you don't have to draw all these estimated positions more than once. So you draw one estimated position, and then you move the green line in parallel uh, to the green dotted line, and where the green dotted line crosses the red line, that's where we are. That's the fix. And this is called a running fix. So this is something that you could repeat from your Yachtmaster offshore course. Now, what does this have to do with celestial navigation? Well, let's assume that the first green line that here in coastal level is a bearing of 73 degrees is not a bearing of 73 degrees. It's a, nevertheless a line along which we are somewhere, namely the first position line, the position line in the morning. And the red line would be the position line in the afternoon. So the position line in the morning, the green line, is in 90 degrees to the azimuth towards the morning sun, right? So here we have the sun somewhere in the morning to the east. We have the azimuth, which is pointing towards the sun. The position line is 90 degrees to the, um, to the azimuth. So the green thin line, that's where we are in the morning. Now, a couple of hours later, the sun moves on to west. So we make another azimuth, the red azimuth, ZN. And 90 degrees to that azimuth, we have again a position line of the afternoon, that is the red line. So here you can see the similarities between the green line as a position line of the morning and the red line as a position line in the afternoon. It's nothing else but a running fix. Next, we will now plot our own chart. Because very often in the middle of the ocean, you don't have loads of loads of small, large-scale charts. So for this reason, we use a plotting sheet. This plotting sheet looks like this. You can download it from the internet or you can buy it for a couple of pounds uh, or euros, a whole book of them. Um, so what does this look like? It's a self-made chart, one can say. So you do this step by step. First of all, you take the latitude of the assumed position. So let's say that you have a, an assumed position and you think that you are somewhere along the 42 degrees north latitude. And then we need a longitude. And a longitude, you also take some in vicinity of where you are, where you want to be drawing. So in my example, we say 19 west here. So now we have a longitude and a latitude. We also have a scale for the latitude, 42 degrees, and uh, the parallel line on top of that is 43, and the parallel line on the bottom is 41. But how about the longitudes? There's no more, there are no more longitudes drawn in, because the longitude, where you draw that, depends on where you are on the Earth, which latitude you have. And for the scale of where to draw the next longitude, you use here the little helpline which you can find in the right bottom corner. So uh, it's a very small digit, I know, but uh, these horizontal lines are marked as 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 degrees north. So you pick the position uh, of 42 degrees north, that's where you are, and you measure all the way along to the left, which are six thicker lines, 60, degree, uh, 60 minutes, which is one degree. So this is the scale for one degree of longitude. So you move that here, and then you draw a new longitude, 18 west. Since we are western uh, longitudes, 
the more we go to east, the smaller the number gets. When we are on eastern long longitudes, it's the opposite, of course. So what we do now, we do the same on the other side. So now we have 20 degrees west. So that is all what it's all about. Now we have a beautiful chart. The chart has latitudes. The chart has longitudes. If you want to read off a uh, position, of course, you use the scale in the bottom right corner for the longitude. And any distances, like always in all charts, any distances are always measured along a great circle along the longitude. So here we have a distance of some 25 miles, which I have measured off. So we will do some exercises with this, which I will demonstrate demonstrate in, in real life, so to speak. Some of you might now think of how, how about, why can't we use the longitude uh, problem by just taking two heights of the sun on either side of noon? And that is a way that is described and used. Um, I know Bobby Schenk was using it a lot in Germany. And I think the idea is really good in uh, theory. So I just explain what the idea is. In the morning, you measure an angle. You observe the height of the sun, H01, in the morning, at a time slot, at a point in time, time 1, T time. T1, sorry, not T time. That's in the afternoon. And then you wait until the sun goes up to the noon, and then it goes down on the other side. And you wait until it comes down to the exact same height. So uh, the, the idea is that H02, the observed height in the afternoon, must be exactly the same as H01. But of course, it's in the afternoon. And what you do then, you... Uh, look at the difference between the time t1 and time t2. So exactly in the middle there must be the um, uh, the noon time. So when you know what the, at which time you had noon, by using times to r calculations, you can figure out what longitude you are. So what? Why is this not taught? What is the problem? It's, it's good in theory, but it's a bit difficult in practice. Because you really mustn't miss T2. So if you take a, a morning site at, I don't know, 10 o'clock or something, and you have a certain angle, um, you must really wait in the afternoon until the height H02 is exactly the same. And at exactly that time when that happens, it could be cloudy. And you're also, it's very important that you're not allowed to touch the micrometer. It must be set to the same height. H01 must be the same as H02. And the thing is that it's very difficult to take a site when you're not allowed to touch it. So uh, you have to wait and then maybe you missed it and you don't have many seconds to spare. Uh, and you have to sit there and wait and wait and wait also when it happens. It's not that you can come up and do a so shot and then you can go down. Um, and the most important critics about this is that it only works on east-westerly course. Because if you're sailing north-south, for instance, if you're on a southerly course, uh, then uh, the second height would, by nature, be higher than the first sight because you are moving further south. So you can't compare these two heights, really. You have to be on the same latitude. Of course, if you have a very small boat, it doesn't make such a big difference. So it is a method you could use, but it's not supported by the ROA. And if you can do a sun sight and do a sun reduction, uh, it's just as simple as that. It goes quite quickly to take a sun sight when you want to do it, um, and not having to wait until a certain time when a fixed angle is occurring for a second time in the afternoon. So enough with that. We are now moving on to help learn to draw a little bit on uh, our self-made uh, charts, the plotting sheets, and also to look a little bit on the uh, moved, the transferred position line, which is nothing else but running fix. So we'll do some exercises, and I'll help you with that as well. And after that, 
we are done with the sun really and that's what most people are dealing with when they do celestial navigation but if you're interested in uh, digging deeper using planets stars polaris moon maybe then uh, stay tuned in and we'll look at that in the in the next uh, episode